Hello and welcome to the Australian Ghost Whisperer. I'm James Jennings with Katarina Legato as always. How are you, Kat? Good. How are you, James? Pretty good. Pretty That's good. That's good. Yeah, I'm, um, I'm very interested in today's topic because I don't know anything about it mm -hmm. and it's the kind of thing you see in movies and it seems like fiction, but um, from what you tell me, it is real and it is how do you know if you are under a love spell? Mm, a love spell. Love spell. Love spells are real things? It's a real thing. You can become so bewitched by somebody. Really? Yeah, it's almost like... Someone can build, it's like a spider with its web. Oh, and that sounds the sexy. victim feels as though they've been caught in a web. Oh. They can't escape. That sounds like a nightmare situation. It is. It can be. It can become. I've seen. What happens is this in most unhealthy relationships, okay. there's always a giver and a taker. Yes. Right, yes. and the taker just has those radars on and knows how to pick the giver because the taker will always seek to take. Mm -hmm. So he'll be, he or she, I'm sorry, I don't mean to just pick on the male race, will be looking for someone who is ready to give. So you've mm -hmm. always got those people who are really giving in relationships mm -hmm. and, you know, they want to do everything for their partner or, you know, they want to be perfect and they'll do anything as long as that person will love them. Mm -hmm. And the other person is there to take, take. So it's like, a, it's like energetic vampirism. Right. Okay, so the taker is looking to take energy from the giver because mm. they don't feel they have enough of their own resources and life, life force within them. Mm -hmm. And the giver's happy to give yes. of her life force because she feels if I give enough, I'll receive something back. Yes. Yeah. But this never occurs mm. because what happens is that the, the, the taker continues taking, taking, taking until the person who's giving is left feeling so disempowered, exhausted and tired that that can be like almost being under the spell of that person because you are allowing someone to dominate you. Yeah. yeah. To kind of make you feel responsible for their needs. Mm. Like, you know, you're responsible for, for making me happy. You're responsible for, for cooking my meals and cleaning my house and even looking after my children mm. in the cases of when you get together with, you know, people who have been married before with children. So we see a lot of these various cases. Mm -hmm. And so what happens eventually, obviously the giver runs out of given, hey, mm. there's nothing left to give. And they are, these people rock up in my office and they are so exhausted. They've got bags under their eyes mm. and all their chakra system is completely depleted right. because they've just been giving of their life force and energy. And, and, the, and the worst part about it is they'll sit there and cry and cry and cry and saying, you know, I gave so much, I gave so much and I gave so much. And I'm like, why? Mm. Why? I gave so much. I, I, I wished, you know, I was hoping he, he, this person should love me and he should have loved me. I gave so much. And this is what happens, unfortunately. The person's given so much and it's like they've made this unconscious decision that if I keep giving, mm. this person eventually one day will give me the love I so feel that I need, in, that I can't have that I don't feel for myself. And it never comes. And never comes. So that's one form of a very unhealthy relationship. And it is like being under a love spell because whilst you're the giver, you're, all you're wanting to do, your whole world is about how can I make this person happy? Mm. How can I make sure this person never leaves me? You know, what if this person, you know, doesn't love me anymore? What if one day they don't want me? So they're just consumed by giving and giving. Mm. And the taker gets its energetic feed from just taking, taking, and, and it's feeding his ego, his or her ego, mm. because they're just on an ego trip of power. So they're feeling like, you know, this person is sort of beneath them and doing anything for them. Mm. Mm. There's also relationships, love spells that are actual love spells, where they use rituals, the binding rituals to bind somebody to them. Right. So I've also seen cases where 
um, someone has been under a, a love spell where a, they have been bound by a ritual. Right, and who performs the ritual? The well, person in the relationship, or do they go and to a third party and get them to do all it? All of those, either one of those. Oh, okay. So yeah, so you can go to people who do these types of things. Where and do you I, find? Because you're not going to find someone in the yellow pages who's like love spells for yeah, sale. Yeah, look. Unfortunately, there's a lot of occultists and, and um, yeah, kind of witchcrafty sort of dark right. dudes that do that kind of stuff. You can probably find out how to do that stuff on the internet these days. Uh, exactly. Like. There's, and do you know, it's again, it's your intention. You could Google something, and I'm not suggesting at all that this is the way you do it mm. that, to, to find love. But, um, yeah, a lot of people do Google stuff and do it themselves. And if you're setting an intention that you are deciding that you want to take someone by force, mm -hmm. because it is by force, mm. it, it's, um, it's not divinely given, then by doing rituals, binding rituals, and eventually if that person is susceptible and that person's a little vulnerable, not strong, then if eventually they can fall into that trap. Okay. Where they and I've had again, people come to me and go, I know this person's no good for me. I, I don't love this person, but I can't seem to move away. Mm. I feel like every time I let go, I feel like something just draws me back, pulls me back to them, and I don't know why. And then the other thing they'll say is I'm I, I'm consumed by bad dreams, or I'm constantly dreaming of this person, mm. or I'm feeling confused. I can't make decisions anymore. Mm. And that I know this straight away by looking at their energy. I can see hook in them where the person's done a ritual on them and it's like you know you keep reeling that person right. in so they never awaken and realize that hey who are you you know so that and it is it's like being caught in a spider's web where you just can't let go you can't move away and you feel controlled and you feel you can sometimes they even feel like i just don't know how to live without this person anymore i'm so in need of being with them so it becomes oh, yes. they become so consumed that sounds awful it is awful yeah so do you think but there sounds like with the people who come to see you about this they have some kind they of they conscious... do of course there's always an inner knowing your inner spirit is always there your higher self Telling is, you. yeah, that there's something wrong here. Something mm. isn't working here. This isn't right that I feel this way. Mm. And and so when they um, come and see me, yes, absolutely. They already know that something or a lot of things are not right. Yeah. And also some of these people that are doing these rituals are, have a lot of entities around them. So they become conduits for dark entities because they're not, this is they're going against natural law, mm. God's laws, mm. and so they're obviously working from the dark. So what happens when there's an, a sexual exchange? Also, what happens is the the entities that are around this couple are also absorbing the energy um, of that sexual experience and all the emotions and feelings that are involved in a sexual. So it's a very vampiric relationship that sounds deeply You're being awful vampirized by the person who's doing the rituals but also by the entities that are involved in a ritual because when when someone invokes a, a type of a ritual you're also invoking the dark realms to give it power right so it's powered up by these entities and so these entities then become part of this couple's yeah. experience and they're feeding off all the emotions and the energy and the exchanges that are going on. So it just perpetuates a really negative situation and, Absolutely. and it becomes yes. like a cycle of, yeah, like so, okay, stating the obvious, that's awful. How do people break out of something like that? Like if there's such a, you know, cycle of awfulness going on, mm. how do you get out of mm. it? And it sometimes can be quite difficult because by that point, if they haven't done anything about it and many years have transpired, 
by that point they feel so... It's been gone for years. Yeah, absolutely. They feel so disempowered. I mean, people stay married their entire lives to situations like this where Mm. they just give up. Mm. And they um, just get used to being in this state of sadness and depression and tiredness. And after a while, of course, you know, there'll be like illness and sickness that Mm. will come from the constant drain of their life force. Um, Mental illness can occur. Um, Nervous breakdowns can occur. Mm. And so it's quite sad. Yeah. But hopefully... um, I think people now are much more spiritually aware and much more spiritually in touch with themselves and can kind of get a good feel and and know that something's not right in a relationship like that. Mm. Mm. This is why it's really important to, to work through your issues. And with a lot of people I see, I mean, we all, and I think most of us have issues or Uh, you know, from our childhood Mm. where perhaps we watched our own parents struggle in their marriages. And so we don't quite get a clear picture of what a real relationship where there's a healthy exchange of love, what it really looks like. We have no point of reference. You know, if we've seen our own parents struggle with with their marriage, then we feel that we go out and we kind of look for something like that because it feels comfortable. That's all we know. So Mm. we go out in the world and we look for a relationship that resembles that of struggle, of that which our parents had. So... I've definitely seen people in relationships that seem to be just repeating the patterns of what their parents did. Mm. I've seen plenty of examples of that. Like... And people just aren't aware, but you know, you can have some empathy for that situation because, mm. again, they've got that's all they know. They, mm. they, they didn't experience any kind of different situation that um, awakens them to the fact that it can mm. be more than that. A lot of people just think that this, I mean, look, you know, nothing's perfect, you know. Every, I, I don't think there's one relationship on the planet that probably doesn't have something dysfunctional about it. Like, <laughs> like, I mean, I don't know every oh, relationship don't know. I on the I think there are some people who are madly in love. Oh, I'm sure yeah, that. No, I'm, sure that. I'm sure I'm sure. But there is, yes, I'm, I'm just, I'm just saying, like, even, like, small dysfunctional things. Like, nothing's perfect. No, of course not. But some things are, like, less perfect than others, mm. I guess. And, and when you model after that, you're, you're in mm. trouble. It, it always comes down to doing the work on yourself, mm. getting to know yourself. Being able to be with yourself before you can be with anybody else. And, mm. and often these situations of um, these vampiric type relationships occur because that person is looking for someone else to, to give them the love that they can't feel for themselves. Mm. Mm. And, um, and so they become desperate in their search for love, mm. to be fed the love. And, and no one else can give you what you don't have already within you no no one can feed you the love that you're denying yourself yeah and until you get to that point where you're able to love yourself and embrace yourself and know thyself Mm. it's going to be difficult to 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 be in a healthy balanced relationship Mm. i was gonna say like what are some of the red flags in someone else who might put you into like a, a vampiric relationship situation but before I asked her, I thought, well, sometimes the red flags can be your own. So mm. if you're someone who actually is like, oh, the only way I'm going to find love is if I give my all and I mm. give myself, like, that's a red flag right there. Oh, like, that's yes. your red flag. You've got to, you, yeah. which is exactly you're what you're feeling saying. that you have to control that person or you can't trust them or very clingy. You know, I see relationships mm. where the, the, there's one partner who's very, very clingy mm. and mm-hmm. wants to know where the, their partner is 24 hours a mm. day. I mean, they're not allowing for them both to grow and evolve and mm. in harmony. It's it's this, you know, being controlled or being domineered or being, yeah. It is a real question of control, isn't it? Like, that's the key thing here. It's like people are afraid of losing... Because then they'll have to... What they have. Yeah, because then they have to face their inner pain. Mm. Then they have to... Look at themselves. Look at themselves and face their inner pain and feel their pain that they've probably had since their own childhood. Yeah. But we can't avoid the pain. You know, you can't just keep suppressing and suppressing. There yeah. comes a point where you have to feel 
that pain and be able to walk through it and be able to experience it and heal it and let it go. Mm. It doesn't have to be something that a burden that you carry for all of your life. Yeah, absolutely. Because mm. it just, yeah, as, as you said, it's negative patterns just keep repeating until you actually pull yourself up mm -hmm. and kind of go, why am I doing this? It's that self-inquiry that you were mm. mentioning. That's, that's and people are afraid. People are afraid that of being alone. That's the biggest thing why mm. people stay in these destructive relationships. They're so afraid that, oh, but if I leave this relationship, I'll never find anybody else. Mm. Okay, so how does somebody know if they've had a love spell put on them or some kind of ritual that's mm. made The them symptoms, yeah. yeah. The first one would be obvious um, tiredness. Mm -hmm. constant tiredness and sometimes it can also be I'm constantly tired does that mean someone's yeah but it's a me? real tiredness where there's no but no, I don't think so James <laughs> no, who'd want to put a stop love spell flattering on me? yourself yeah, exactly who'd want to put a love spell on stop me stop flattering oh. yourself so, yeah, a constant tiredness and obviously no matter how much a person sleeps they mm. just wake up um, tired all the time, mm -hmm. um, confusion, also um, weight in the chest. So you'll feel like you have a heaviness in the chest. Mm -hmm. so sometimes the inability to even take a deep breath. Mm. You can have a, a you can experience a great deal of like nausea and sickness because of the rituals and the dark entities. It's a very toxic energy, mm -hmm. so it can make you feel quite ill and um, toxic, mm -hmm. uh, loss of appetite or mm -hmm. even wanting to eat all the time because you're feeling like if I eat then I might get some more energy and I might feel better. Mm -hmm. There's some of those um, symptoms that you could be feeling and also feeling like you can't break away from this person. You start to feel suffocated by this person, mm -hmm. but yet you can't break away. You don't have the energy. You don't have the ability to think clearly of how do I leave this relationship? How do I get out of this mm -hmm. situation? Mm -hmm. You could be even hearing voices and feeling the entities around you. If you're a little intuitive, you might even see like black shadows or things around you when you're together with this person. Mm, there's nothing romantic about that. No, not uh, at all. <laughs> uh, so, how, if someone's in that situation, how do they get out of it? Mm. What, like, what, what, what's you really need to perhaps talk to a friend or somebody that you really trust and try. The best thing is get away from that person for a while. Mm. Sometimes trying to think oh, I'm going to leave them permanently is all too much when you're under a, a black magic ritual. Mm. So the first step is try to get away. Try and get yourself away for a week with a friend perhaps. Try and get into nature. Mm. If it's warm, swim in the ocean, lay in the sun, walk, walk in nature, um, sit in the grass, mm. hug a tree because all of that's going to help to ground you. It's going to help to, you know, the life force of Mother Earth to mm. work through you and energize you enough to be able to get some of that life force back again. Mm. Mm. Sometimes it's really hard when you're under a ritualistic um, black magic spell it is hard sometimes to try to meditate or pray you can actually feel worse because you're you, once you get into that kind of quiet space you feel like you're more heavily um, in the darkness mm. so sometimes they said avoid that it's best to try and get into nature um, also some sea salt baths so get into a bath with lots of sea salt in it a couple of cups of sea salt and soak because the sea salt absorbs a lot of that negativity okay. begins to allow you to sort of feel some of your own energy back mm -hmm. um, and obviously you're going to need help you're going to need to find help by finding someone that can clear the black magic that can break the spell for you that can um, give you a really good nice healing mm -hmm. and get everything aligned back together again take out the hook so you need someone who really is um, knows about you know rituals and how to clear it mm. the well, last yeah. thing you want to do i'm so sorry because i've seen people do this yeah. is go to someone else who's going to do another ritual on you to let them go oh oh yeah because then i've had people come with layers with rituals and so they've ended up going to some other person to do a ritual on that person and just done a ritual on them so that they can um, part and then it's it just 
it becomes this cocktail of all these different rituals layered on top of rituals. So it sounds like the worst Harry Potter movie of all time. Oh, it's a real nightmare, a nightmare to unravel then because you've got all this different frequencies and energies and, and, and it's just, it really is hard work. Mm. Oh, what that, my question was going to be, if someone, I'm sure people have come to you where mm. they've had... Oh, oh, heaps. So heaps what do you do? What, what, do you, what do you do to break the spell well first of all i have to go to the core of how the spell was done and how do you how do you do that and then so once i can see and feel so whether the spell was done by sometimes a group of people or whether it was a spell that was done um by one person so you can figure out who yeah i can psychically feel what how the spell was created mm -hmm. and i have to discreate it right so i have to clear that abolish it mm -hmm. so that it no longer exists mm -hmm. um um, and then I have to clear the person's um, energy, obviously go through their chakras, remove all the hooks and the psychic links. So every time we form relationships with people, we, we form like psychic links. Mm, mm. And so I have to pull out all those psychic links and obviously then energize the person and clear them and just help them to feel aligned and at peace again but it is a journey for them and they often have to come back a few times to obviously get their energy back to a, a nice mm. sort of consistency if you like because yeah. otherwise they just um you know they if especially if they've been drained or under yeah, a spell for empty. so long yeah. yeah exactly so so you can't kind of it's not like a car where you can just fill them up again it has mm. to be slowly so that they can um get used to holding that their own sort of space again yeah that makes sense mm. yeah mm. and for the people who actually perform or pay people to perform these rituals on people Surely that's going to be bad karma for them. Like, yeah, of course. Like what it's happens to not... these people who, who well, go around Well, these people will often, you know, of course these things, you know, what we do on this planet matters, but these people will obviously be in an eternal search for love or mm. um, and, and and they just won't find it and, and they often will then try to find someone else that they can do that to and, um, of course, there's karmic consequences to it. Eventually, they will become possessed by these entities. They mm. will become quite sick by being in that constant negativity. Mm. They're shortening their own lifespan, really. Yeah, because mm. we've talked about that before as well. When people dabble in dark stuff like that, you are essentially opening yourself up to dark entities, conjuring their presence, and mm. that, that's not going to wind up. Well, that's, that's what powers up spells, see. Right. You're conjuring, right. exactly. You're conjuring up all these dark entities, whether yeah. sometimes they don't even realize that they're conjuring up because you're making a, a, a contract with these entities. Mm. Um, if you're going to, to use a spell or a ritual on a person, then you're making a contract with these dark entities for their help and assistance. And this is something that you will have to pay back to them. Mm. And it can be even at the time of death where you will be sucked in by these dark entities and you may become one yourself. I've seen spirits where I've we're gone to clear a, a home or an environment and I have actually seen dark entities come for a lost soul and just absorb them rather than the light. If that's not an advertisement to not mess with that oh, stuff, you should I, don't know, I don't know what yeah. is. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so what, if, it's like selling your soul. So yes, if you sold your soul like. to the devil, right? when you do things like that, you have essentially sold your soul to the devil mm. and the devil will always come back and want payment. Collect, yeah. you, when you make a contract with the, the devils, the demon, then that you, you, you will always owe them and you can't get out of it. Mm. And um, it's never going to be pleasant. Yeah. Mm. So the moral of the story is fall in love the old-fashioned way. Mm by two people actually liking each other, not doing black Yeah, spells. grow. I always say, you know, I always believe that when you're getting to know somebody and you 
do it slowly. There's no mm. rush. I find sometimes people like to rush into relationships and then, you know, three, four months later, it's like they just fall flat. It's take your time, get to know somebody yes, and sir. really feel from your heart if it really feels right, if it really makes you happy, if you feel good around this person. Mm. If you start having doubts, if you start feeling tired, if it's a relationship that begins to feel as though you're confused, you don't really know where you stand, then get away. Don't yeah. waste your time. Don't stay. I find people sometimes stay in these types of destructive relationships too long. It's like just move away. If it doesn't feel right, true love should not be hard work. Yeah, yeah. When you start sort of feeling like you're trying to guess what that person's thinking or how do they feel about me or I'm not sure or they're not calling me, they're not consistent in their behaviour, man, let it go. I've definitely You been. let it go. You should not stay in a relationship where you need to continuously struggle. I've definitely been in that, and in that situation. Yeah, we all, yeah, I think we all have. And I've had a multitude of people coming for readings and it's like they're in this and they're struggling and they come and ask me, does this person love me? And it's like, no. Yeah. They're just kind of using you for whatever it is that they need out of you. Mm. It's really hard to... to you should never have to ask that question. But yeah, so if you're asking it, it already means it's not right. Yeah, yeah. Well, there's... there's... And I think everybody deserves to have love and um, everybody can mm. eventually, you know, draw a healthy, loving relationship to themselves. But... They have to do the work. They have to know thyself first. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. So there you go. Do the work. Don't do mess with work. black magic. Mm. Don't put love spells on people. Don't be a jerk. <laughs> All these things. Be a good person. And, uh, you know, be, exist from the heart, which is basically... We say that time and time again with what we do, but you know that's mm. what you've got to do. You got to, you got to to love and respect. Yeah, you know, and every relationship is sacred. Treat every person as a sacred individual. You know, even if it doesn't work out, mm. and and you're going to break up, obviously in normal conditions, because not someone who's done a love spell, you just get mm. away from these people. But you know, I think it's that there's so much to be said when you're finishing a relationship. You know, honour it and, and finish it up in a beautiful, respectful and healthy way. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. Absolutely. Don't yeah. dump someone with a text message, for God's sake. That's not classy. That's not classy. No, no. And that's going to cause you karma. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. It's a, you, know, you know that the, the term for it these days is ghosting. If you, if you break up with someone... Mm. And you just people. Some people don't even do text messages. These they'll just vanish. <laughs> yes, I'm they vanish. So, so, so that means you're being ghosted. Oh my gosh! It's I was just ghosted. So I was ghosted for the first ghost time a few years ago, and I was like, "What is this? We're, this is not manners." Like, uh, you know, like, am, am I so old fashioned that, like, I mean, at least send me a text. Like, yeah, that's pretty like, bad. You know, like, but they just vanish like that. And wow. You're like, what? Yeah, I've heard all kinds of things. Or where someone's getting ready for a date and the person never shows up to pick them really? up. Yeah. Oh, that's even worse. It's terrible. Yeah, there's awful things that people do to each other. And I think, you know, we need to go back to some of the good old-fashioned <laughs> respect. Yep. Don't get on Tinder and be a, be a jerk. Oh, yeah. You know, yeah, be, yeah. yeah. But, you know, I don't know. It, Be it, truthful and honest. Exactly. It feels weird to actually have to say that. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you should be truthful and honest. Yeah, you not, not lead another person yeah, like, on. You know, it's yeah. just like simple, be a decent person. Mm. And, you know, I guess a lot of people don't know how to do it. Yeah, because they're not honouring themselves. People mm. who cannot honour another have no honour for themselves, have no respect That's for true. themselves. Therefore, they're not going to respect someone else. Mm. Mm. Okay, well, look, I think that's a, that's a good amount of dating advice from mm. Katerina and James for today. So we might, we, might, <laughs> we might wrap it up there before we get ourselves in trouble. Yes. Uh, uh, but we appreciate you watching. Thank you. And if you haven't followed us on uh, our podcast or subscribed on YouTube, please do. We appreciate your support. And uh, I don't know. See like, you next time. See you next time. We might have some more, like, relationship advice for you it's a bit like a dating show now isn't it yeah <laughs> <laughs> see you next time guys bye